Welcome back to the Propeller Pilot YouTube channel. This video is a part of the instrument flying course on my website. The purpose of making this video is to add a little more information to the existing course itself. The goal of Propeller Pilot is to keep updating the information and give the best to the students and pilots who are using it. And just like most of my videos on the YouTube channel, this also has a bonus step at the end. So let's get started. When we talked about VOR service volumes in the course, we saw that there are two different categories of VOR service volumes. There are two ways of classifying. The older one, which was the terminal low and high, and the newer ones, which has VOR low and VOR high. A lot of times when I'm talking to students and uh, talking to instructors, different pilots, they think that the new service volumes, the VOR low and the VOR high, have replaced the previous service volumes. But that's not the case. What we'll do is we'll see this using an example and understand how to distinguish between these service volumes. It is important to know service volumes because it tells us how far we can receive the VOR signals reliably and use it for our instrument navigation. The first example that we are going to take is LMT. The LMT VOTAC has a frequency of 115.9 and you can see that there's an H written next to Klamath Falls. This means that it is a high service volume. The high service volume which is this one. Now, if you're using a VFR sectional and this particular information is not present in the VFR sectional, then what you do is you go to either the low end root chart, which is pretty easy. You can just go to the low end root chart and read it here. But if you are just a VFR pilot and want to know the VOR service volume, then the second step, the second way of knowing the VOR service volume is the chart supplement of airports around this VOTAC. So I looked into the Klamath Falls chart supplement page. Then you go to the radio aids to navigation section. You have Klamath Falls and H written next to it. That is how you know the service volume. Let's take the example of the newer service volumes. The example that I have in my mind is VNA. VNA is Vienna VOR. It's a VOTAC actually. So Vienna has VL written next to it, which means VOR low. The VOR low service volume is this one. This is the new category of service volumes under the minimum operation network program of the FAA. You can see that all of these different service volumes coexist. It isn't the case that the new service volumes have replaced the previous ones. Both of them still exist. Yes, eventually you will have the new service volumes only, but right now both of them still exist. VFR sectional chart and you wouldn't find the service volume and you'll have to look into the chart supplement. Chart supplement, you'll find the same thing, which is you'll know if it is VOR low service volume or not. Again, the easier way is to look at the low end root chart and figure it out. Now comes the bonus part. If you take a look at Klamath Falls in the frequency box of the low end root chart, as well as the chart supplement in the service volumes, you had an H and then another H. There were two classes. H and H. The first one, as we saw, was for the high service volume VOR. What is the second one for? The second one is the service volume of the TACAN. More often than not, a lot of these navigational aids are co located, their frequencies are paired, or they are co located at the same site. That's why it is necessary to provide the service volumes of both of these together. Similarly, in Vienna, you can see that the VOR is VOR low service volume. And the TACAN has the service volume of low as well. This is what the second letter for the class represents. So don't be boggled when someone asks you what is the second letter for. Now you know it. 